And welcome once more to Flashpoints. I'm Bob Orr. Joining me again, as always, Juan Zarati, our national security analyst. Juan is at Harvard doing some work up there in Cambridge, Mass. Juan, good to see you. Bob, great to see you. Sorry I'm not with you in person. Let's talk a little bit about where we are uh, with the situation in Ukraine. Uh, President Putin seems to be kind of taking his time with the next move, and the president of the United States yesterday called this a pause. What's your assessment? Well, we are seeing a bit of a diplomatic pause. We're seeing the foreign ministers meeting in Paris today to include the Ukrainians and the Russians, trying to lessen the temperature, uh, lessen the tension. You saw President Putin give his press conference where he uh, declared that he wasn't uh, in the business of uh, annexing Crimea, uh, which gave certain uh, commentators uh, some hope that we were going to see a, a lessening of tension. That said, I think uh, what analysts are seeing, and certainly what I think, is that Russia's playing a bit of a longer game here, and you have the Russians playing for uh, continued influence and pre uh, presence in Crimea, while also trying to influence the political develop developments in Kiev, which are still fluid and in formation. So what is the potential here still for some kind of diplomatic uh, outcome, and what would that likely look like? We know Secretary of State Kerry's trying to fashion that now. Well, I, I think the U.S. and Western countries have uh, very direct interest here in ensuring that this problem in Crimea doesn't bleed over into eastern Ukraine. And so ensuring that the Russians don't take further steps, uh, not only to inflame tensions in Crimea, but uh, taking further steps in eastern Ukraine, for example, to occupy or to put troops in place. And so th the first order of business and battle is to ensure things don't get worse. Then the question is, how do you roll back the Russians, uh, getting their military presence out of Crimea, other than in Sevastopol, wh where they already have their Black Sea fleet uh, present? And so the question is, can you create diplomatic off-ramps that allow the Russians to save face, that allow tension to decrease, uh, and that finds a way of ensuring that the Russians aren't continuing to increase their presence uh, and instability in Ukraine, where there's already instability politically uh, and economically? It seems to uh, some observers that what's going on here is that President Putin is trying to reassert uh, Russian authority. And whether or not that means he takes over any kind of territory, he's clearly trying to send a signal here that, that Russia still matters. What happens next with other countries, say like Poland and Lithuania? Well, it's a very good point. I think the U.S. and the West wants to reassure uh, those countries uh, that we're not going to turn a blind eye to Russian aggressiveness and posturing uh, in its near abroad. There's no question that President Putin is asserting Russian power. There's no qu question that he wants to uh, create a sense of a greater Russian state, uh, making it uh, appear to be a superpower again, and certainly trying to influence along its borders. We've seen this in Georgia in 2008, again now in the Ukraine. Um, and it's no uh, secret that it's those other countries that you've mentioned, the Baltic states in particular, that are most worried. It's why they've called the meetings of NATO. It's why Poland has called for another meeting of NATO. Uh, and so part of the posturing here diplomatically and in terms of other steps that can be taken have to do not just with deterring or affecting what Russia is doing in the Ukraine, but also reassuring our allies in the region uh, that we're going to check Russian adventurism uh, in the future. German Chancellor Merkel uh, said that Putin, in her opinion, had maybe lost touch with reality. But former Secretary of Defense Bob Gates says he doesn't buy that at all. He thinks Putin knows exactly what he's doing. Oh, absolutely. I think, I think this is part of uh, Putin's plan of strengthening Russia's presence and image. This has to do with trade. You've seen this with the trading arrangements he's made uh, regionally, uh, in, in part to counterbalance the European Union. You've seen it in terms of his uh, placement of military resources in, uh, around uh, the neighborhood. It's, uh, it's defined policy on things like South Ossetia and Abkhazia. You've seen him wanting to, to place Russia on the world stage with Sochi, uh, hosting the Olympics and Paralympics, uh, hosting the G8. Uh, Russia's as well going to be hosting the Financial Action Task Force in Moscow in June. So th these are all attempts of putting Russia on the world stage uh, and ensuring that the rest of the world has to take Russia into account, whether it's with respect to its near abroad or issues like Iran and Syria. Uh, and clearly Putin is uh, trying to deal with what he, he considers, I think, to be instability on his border, and he's using that as justification uh, for Russian uh, strength and, uh, and military presence in Crimea. All right, Juan, we want to talk about U.S. options. We'll do that on the next Flashpoints. Juan, thanks as always.
Thank you, Bob. And thanks for watching Flashpoints. I'm Bob Orr. We'll see you again next time.